Hello, and welcome to a new video on Code Tech and Tutorials. I know it's been a while, but I just had something on my mind and I wanted to make somewhat of a theoretical video on understanding programming, because I think a lot of people kind of get stuck in this phase of just not conceptually understanding how programming and computers work. And this is something you will start to understand if you go through like computer science courses and start learning binary math and a little bit about machine code and that sort of thing. But it's not, it doesn't really get explained at the most basic fundamental level too often. And this is something you need to understand in order to often develop new features or come up with things on the fly or be creative with programming. And I'm not saying you can't do that otherwise, but it, it helps to start thinking of this like Legos or building blocks. And you've probably heard that a lot, but I actually mean that at an even lower level, like, uh, we all have probably all heard that, you know, computer science is basically in computer programming is basically messing with binary bits at, at the lowest level. You're just, you're just turning things on and off and going through a little logical switches. So what you can do is you can take that very conceptually. Uh, I don't know if that's a word and apply that in a way that allows you to build features. And it doesn't really matter what language, it doesn't matter what framework. That's the really cool thing about this is uh, the, all the above abstractions of what's the latest trend, what editor you're using, all that. None of that really matters all that much, uh, if at all, really. I mean, it can help with your workflow once you're going, but as far as getting an actual understanding and uh, kind of coming up with the creative ability to actually implement things, none of that really does anything for you. So I, it's just, it kind of, I, I'll say annoys me to go on forums and posts and, and just see so many people going on and on about, uh, just like little nuances of, of things that aren't really related to programming, but they seem to try to make it like a main topic, like, uh, you know, just about what keyboard you're using or what mouse or Vim versus Emacs or what hotkeys you use and all just all this like random little things and you know all that's fine and everything really but it's that's more of an aesthetic thing and it really has nothing to do with uh computer science and uh, you, well I'm saying computer science kind of uh, vaguely I kind of mean like creative programming and coming up with your own programs and one of the reasons I wanted to give this sort of talk this is an off, totally off the cuff talk to I don't have notes uh, nothing like that. So I'm just, just winging it. So maybe that'll make it interesting. Maybe that'll make it confusing. I guess we'll see. But I wanted to get this out there because one of the things I'm going to do pretty soon is talk more about application development. I think that needs a bit of a, a background talk about uh, just kind of ignoring a lot of this, um, we'll say software that is sort of irrelevant to actual programming, but is made mainstream. So I'm going to put up some random, some kind of random visuals and, uh, and just talk about a few things here. And hopefully that helps some people get started or understand things that they might have kind of been at a barrier with or not really sure how to address. Because I feel like some of these things were definitely uh, affecting me when I started because I was always looking for the right tutorial to do exactly what I wanted to do or the right framework to do exactly what I wanted to do or the right program. And to just kind of be able to think about it in a different way where you no longer need to find the perfect answer, but know how to formulate it yourself is a really huge step. And I'm not even saying you're necessarily going to come up with the exact answer, but just to be able to start ballparking these answers and start kind of understanding how you would begin to even come up with a proper solution without um, someone walking you through it. Is, is huge and it uh, can make a big difference in your career and your life and what you can come up with and what you can build. Transitioning to this scene, kind of putting up some semi-random background, not necessarily totally related, but just to give you guys something to look at other than my face and me talking and uh, maybe a little additional stimulation, if you will. Uh, so I might change this every once in a while, but also this is going to kind of work to jog my mind and, and maybe talk a little bit better if I feel like I'm getting stuck. All right, so let's go back to thinking of it like building blocks and Legos. Now, you might already have heard this a million times uh, because it kind of is that, but you might think of it as like, okay, I have this programming language I like, maybe C++, maybe JavaScript, maybe Python, and you start looking at things like, okay, what libraries do I have available? 
what does this language have to offer? And you might try to come up with ideas or solutions based on that. And I think that is mostly improper uh, because the better or more real way to think about problems is to think about how they can be structured from the ground up. I'm going to try to give you an example. Okay, so if you think about like, think of a problem, maybe an abstract problem, like how can we build, for example, how can we build a brick wall, just like a literal brick wall, you know, and how do we put a window in it, right? If you think of that sort of problem, all right, and then you might think, okay, um, because, uh, you know, I have a video game I'm making, for example, and I want to make a brick wall and I want it to have windows, but I want to be able to dynamically put that window in a different spot. And you might think, okay, I'll open up Blender. I'm going to start building assets uh, to do that. And then maybe I'll just like load different assets for the different places I want the window. And that is a ton of data. I mean, you've got these object files you're going to load in and you're going to, you know, you're going to have a bunch of different ones and you're going to swap them out on the fly. You got load times, you got loaders. You, you're going to have this giant, just a huge, it's just going to take a lot of space and a lot of computational power to load and unload and, and, and do all this stuff just to make a wall with a window in a different spot. Or you could think about it from a more ground up standpoint and think ones and zeros. Uh, how would you do that? That's kind of simple if you think about it in like yeah, in a way that you could say okay well let's just make a whole bunch of ones and zeros and everywhere there's a one we'll have the wall be solid and anywhere there's a zero we'll have it be an empty space all right this is just the simplest example i could think of and with that way you could you could literally just put in a bunch of ones and zeros or a binary data structure and uh and load that in and then have that show the wall and anywhere there's zero it's a window it's an open spot and now you've just saved a ton of space because you could uh, rather than loading in assets all the time you probably load in like i don't know if you're doing graphics or something you might have two textures but uh you know in the spots where there's empty you don't show the texture and it's just see-through and otherwise you you do show it and it's really that simple you don't have to make a bunch of different assets you don't have to load and unload you just kind of like shift it around a little bit and your computer will visualize it properly that might be a little too abstract but just you know if you can just think about it as like one one is a solid spot and zero is a not solid spot it's that simple it's a very simple thing and you can do that with most problems when you break them down and that's it's all about breaking it down because things get really complicated at times and uh you know there's all these concepts you need to understand and and things like that and most of those are somewhat irrelevant a lot of times you know, when you break it down and really really analyze it As, you know this this goes for a lot of a lot of different things you could say for example if you just want something to move you could say that when it's a one or you know not zero it's moving or when it's a zero it's stationary and that's it You've got two bits and you've got movement rather than uh, going through a whole giant structure of something that's provided to you of how to make movement. Now, obviously you could do more with it than that, but that's what you got to start thinking about. So what could you do with two bits? You could move or not move, or you could go forward or backwards, but you couldn't stop. So you add another bit to do another thing, you know, three bits, you could go forward, backwards, or stop Add another bit. Now you can jump. So with four bits, you could get four full movement. And that's, that's a pretty small amount of data to do movement. Because if you look at like, I don't know, any game engine, Unreal, Unity or something, and you look at, okay, I just want to move. What do I got to do? You get, and you get all their structure of stuff. And it's basically a really, really large, uh, sizable amount of data and structures and framework all do a little bit of movement. But when you break it down in your head, you can think in ways where it's like, wait, I could do all this with just four bits, you know, and it's basically, you know, that's toggling states. So of course you would have to program around them st those states. Um, like when this bits one move forward, okay, how does move forward work? Sure. You got to program that in, but, uh, you got it boiled down to a very, very simple form. And that's really what I mean by all this is just, Kind of understanding how to boil things down to a really simple logical form because when it comes down to it that's ultimately how computers work 
is in these very, very, very simple forms. So it's, I think it's very important to learn how to think like that when you're building stuff, because that's where often the creative juices stem from. All right. Cause you've got these really basic states and then you put algorithms around these state based things. Uh, now I'm not saying that's how you always do it or that's how you always should do it or anything like that. I'm just saying that is the simplest form that, uh, has kind of dawned on me for making stuff. So that's often how I, uh, I'll say regress to thinking when I'm presented with a really complicated problem that I need to solve is I just break it down to some really simple form. Like, okay, I need to move forward. How the heck do I move forward? Well, you're either moving forward or not. So one bit and you could kind of determine that. And then what do you do when it's on? And then you kind of make an algorithm based on that you know, in a game or something, you're going to have like a vector direction. So you just got to figure out that direction say, okay, when this bit is one, um, apply this algorithm to whatever, and that's it. And when it's not one, you stop and you can just do that across the line and you can kind of apply that to almost anything. Like, uh, I don't know, think of an example. I could probably break it down. You might be able to, too. And that's great practice to think of some little problem and think about how you can break it down. And often you'll, you'll come to understand that when you learn other things that they often stem from this, like I'm trying to think of a great example here, but like even as far as, uh, lexing and parsing and compilers. Now I'm not like a compiler expert or anything, but one of the things it does, um, I believe it's the, is it the parser or the lexer? I always get those mixed up. Like I said, I'm not a compiler expert. I need to study it more, but first, you know, you, you basically scan the text file and see what's in it. And all that is, is looking at little things and comparing them. It's like, is there a comma here? Is there a semicolon? What, what, uh, character are we looking at? It's just a lot of comparisons and determining if it's right or wrong or if it fits or doesn't fit. And, uh, you can break that down into kind of a binary thinking form and that'll help you understand it. Cause you might say, okay, I want it to, maybe I'm making my own compiler and I want it to understand this line of code, uh, specifically just think of any line of code. Maybe, maybe you'll say like integer X equals five. So you want it to be able to read integer and determine that that's either a real thing, either valid or not valid. And how do you determine that? You look at what came before it. Was that valid or not valid? So a one or zero there. And then you look at the word integer. Was that valid or not valid? A one or a zero there. And then you look at the next part. It might be uh, a variable name. Is that valid or not valid? Another one or a zero there. And then you might have a symbol like an equal sign. Is that valid? A one or a zero there. And you just keep going down the line like that. And it's all just ones and zeros. And, and you know, to logically build that structure is what comes next because you still have to think of this in a way of kind of like a sequential, is this valid or not valid? And it's just all ones and zeros. And you got to determine what happens in these different states. Like, uh, okay, I come to another point and when it's not valid here, what happens? And when it is valid here, we continue as normal. And if, you know, there's certain cases you come to, uh, where special things might happen. And that's, that's where it usually goes down to some algorithm and creating more structures of binary stuff. Now, obviously this is really like, uh, complicated and going to overwhelm your mind after a while. And you can't like fully build something like this, but you can logically think through little problems this way. And, uh, anyways, that's kind of how I do it. A lot of times when I'm stuck is I just very logically step through these little problems and it's all binary thinking. Basically, there's no real midway point. There's no, like this kind of works with computers and math and sciences. It's either it works or it doesn't. There's no in between. Uh, and cause all the in between is also either, well, it's either depending on the case, it's either going to be good enough or which is once again, a one or not good enough, which is a zero. You could flip those if you want. I'm using one as success and, uh, zero is not, but you could do it the other way. You know, you could say zero is success or one is not, but you have to be clear about that. Okay. So that's like the main thing I really just wanted to talk about and just kind of put out there is just this ability to kind of do this conceptual thinking thing when you're programming and to forget about all these frameworks and forget about all these little things and all these fads and what people are saying on 
programming forums. It's none of that really matters all that much. Um, and in terms of actually like getting work done and actually getting your program working how you want. So yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about it. I guess leave questions down below if you want. Um, I am still active. I know I don't make very many videos. I've just been really busy with other things. I got several projects going on. Most of my projects are private these days, so I just don't have much to share with the public, but I will at some point. I've got a few things cooking. Yeah, I guess that's it. All right, I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good one. Peace out.